Good question. Yeah. Good question. Yeah. It turns out that there are worms that live in the ocean that will eat the wood out of the bottom of the ship, like this piece right here, mm -hmm. which, by the way, comes from New York Harbor. It doesn't have to be awfully warm water. Now, it turns out that late in the 1700s, it was determined that it was cost effective to cover the bottom of the ship with uh, layers of copper. And it was really quite thick, not quite as thick as a penny, but a good, good thickness. Now, the, the copper, of course, keeps the worms off of it. But it, there was a, a secondary value to it in that the copper in the salt water sets up a poisonous atmosphere. And nothing grows on the copper, mm -hmm. which keeps the bottom of the ship very clean. And of course, a clipper ship like this, by the way, clipper ships are called clipper ships because they want to clip through the water. Okay. And the idea of speed here to move goods from one country to another, and the copper help keep that speed up. And it clips right along. It clips right along. Right. And again, again, cost effective. So it was very expensive to put that copper on a ship, I'm sure, but it turns out. That's amazing. And now, this piece of wood, is that the same thing, like this one over here? This, this piece of wood on the other, on this side, that's actually a different kind of wood. That's a teredo worm. And this over here is called a ship worm, a much smaller worm. The teredo worm can get as much as an inch thick, where the ship worm is a much smaller worm. Now, we always call them worms, everyone calls them worms, they're really mollusks. They have a little shell, and this one you can actually see the shells embedded in the wood. But they can, uh, they're a shell and a very long uh, animal that gets in there and eats that, eats that woodwork up. Wow, that's you know, pretty amazing. Mm. This is just a pretty great place. And here, you even have something from China. This is, this relates the story, or tells about the story of a Chinese fleet in the early 1400s. Starting in 1405, China had a very large fleet of ships, and the ships themselves were very large. Now, the fleet was self sufficient in it, there would be a ship with uh, food, and a ship with water, and a ship with horses, and a ship with whatever they needed to, to move the fleet. The fleet was mainly for trading, and it would go from China to the, towards the west, uh, through the Indies, uh, and all the way to Africa. And this particular fleet made seven voyages, mm -hmm. very successful. Mm -hmm. They uh, traded, uh, the, the Chinese would have uh, porcelain and silk, and they would trade it for spices. It was the main part they brought back to China. Uh, of course, this was the first time that many of these people had ventured that far away in the world. And one of the things they liked to bring back was exotic animals from Africa. They would bring back a giraffe or something like that. It was the, the emperor really uh, uh, was, was the one that supported all this activity. Now, this started in 1405. It was in the Ming Dynasty, and Zhu Di was the emperor. When Zhu Di died, it turns out that the people that took over ruling, the ruling of China were very nervous about how powerful these traders had become and how rich. Mm -hmm. And they decided there would be no more trading. Oh, so the whole activity was completely stopped. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, oh, the, the little ships that we're seeing down beside this, yes, explain uh, I'll story. show you the, the scale of this ship. By the way, they, they, we can find information that claim that this ship was as much as 480 feet long. So the little ships down beside it are the same scale, and the one to the left is a model of Christopher Columbus's largest ship, Santa Maria. That's amazing. And the one to the right is the, the Cuddy Sock, which you can visit in Greenwich today. Uh -huh. So um, this was a huge ship. So you're saying that this little ship was a big ship for Columbus, and this one's a little bit bigger, but this one is towers. Unbelievable. Over these other ships. Unbelievable. Now, we, the, what happened when they stopped the trading, they actually burned, got rid of all the ships. They did, and the records were burned because they didn't want people rebuilding this trading activity. It turns out that because the records are burned, we don't, we, we're not, we're not ab absolutely sure of the sizes of these ships. The one piece that's been found in China is a rudder post. The rudder post would be the, the the major post would hold on to the rudder of the stern. The size of that rudder post supports the fact that these were extremely large ships. Oh, sure. So they were finding at least a bit, little bit of uh, uh, rudder. Yeah. Now, this, we have a, a wonderful book was written written about this, and a fellow named Gavin Menzies, he's a retired
retired uh, submarine commander. And he wrote a book that he feels he can prove that at one point, on one of the voyages in 1421, he sailed around, the, instead of going from Africa back to China, they sailed around the world. And he points out various parts around the world where they most likely stopped. Um, mm -hmm. Newport, Rhode Island is one specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, the western coast of uh, Mexico is another area that he feels he can prove that they were there. Wow. So it's quite, it, there's a lot of conjecture about it, but uh, it's a possibility. But if you want to read the great book, 1421, it's very, very that interesting. That sounds like a fun book. Fun very, read, right very there. interesting. Now, who's this tall gentleman? This fellow here is Zheng Hao. Now, Zheng Hao was the admiral of this fleet. He was appointed by the, uh, the emperor, Zhu Di, and he took that fleet on those, on those voyages, all seven of those voyages. Uh, it turns out he was a eunuch. He was, they were very thought, well thought of in those days in China, and he, he put in positions of high power and that sort of thing. By the way, when we put this demonstration together, we couldn't get a mannequin large enough to show him up. He was supposedly seven feet tall. Really? Maybe he would have been playing basketball in those days mm -hmm. too, probably. Uh, but the, uh, again, Zheng Hao. Yeah. Hmm. How long was the voyage? You said they went seven. Well, they went seven. It, it looks like about a six month voyage in each direction. So it was mostly almost a year uh, for the whole voyage. If if you want to take a, try to take a, a look at this map on this side, uh -huh. it will give you an idea of the routes that they took uh, from China going around the Indies, through Viet, past the Thailand, Vietnam, all those areas. They did stop in Mecca, mm -hmm. and we know they stopped in Mombasa. Mm -hmm. Now, as I said, the records were destroyed for the most part, but there are records still in these places where they landed. Even in Mombasa, you can find records of this huge fleet coming to visit and trade with them. Um, and you said that book over there is the one that talks about this yes. specifically. Well, yeah, right. yeah. And what, what it's saying is that on one of the voyages, instead of coming back this way, they went back around Africa and all around the world. Oh, I see. This way. Right, right. Right. Okay. Well, they're, they're halfway around. They might as well just keep You would think. You would think. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess in 1400, you're not sure what they're finding. <laughs> not sure what they're there. 